In the rolling desert hills of Mineral County, Nevada, lies a place long abandoned and forgotten by time. Once home to a small town founded upon the prospects of silver mining, the area now sits derelict and silent in the Silver State countryside. This is the story of Broken Hills, Nevada. My interest in researching and exploring this piece of Nevada history, it starts with my adventures through the 1998 PC role-playing game Fallout 2, which featured the town of Broken Hills in a retro-futuristic post-apocalyptic setting. As an avid fan of the Fallout series, I enjoy learning about the real-life counterparts to the game's locations, which led me to discover the real-world ghost town of Broken Hills. Also, before we get into this, I would like to mention that this is my first attempt at making a video of this type. Typically what I make is gaming related videos on my main channel, so just keep that in mind. Without further ado, let's delve into a brief history about Nevada mining in this era. The following information is modified from research written by Francis Church Lincoln in 1924, and it briefly covers Nevada's then-modern mining history for the years of 1855 through 1923, which is a relevant timeline concerning our topic of Broken Hills. Modern mining began in Nevada in 1849 with the discovery of placker gold in a stream flowing into the Carson River near the present-day town of Dayton. This discovery, made by Mormon 49ers on their way to the California gold fields, led others upstream into what was later known as the Virginia Range. Mining had been the paramount industry of Nevada, with its population expanding and decreasing in conjunction with its bullion production. Every county has had its big mines some counties being named after mining camps, while others had been organized or had their boundaries altered to accommodate mining districts. The mining industry of Nevada has since passed through two great cycles. At the beginning of each, there was a period during which many new mines were discovered, and rushes to the discoveries took place. In each case, this was succeeded by a period in which new mines were found, though mining prosperity, measured by production, continued and increased. Afterwards came a period of decline in which production fell, ending in a period of depression with the mining industry becoming dormant. In 1913, two Englishmen, Joseph Arthur and James Stratford, discovered silver lead ore at the site of the future town of Broken Hills. In the following six months, the area saw a rush of miners heading to the region, seeking to make claims of their own. However, this eventually came to a halt. When the incoming miners discovered that Arthur and Stratford had already laid claim to the most promising sites. At the height of its population from 1915 until 1920, Broken Hills reached a maximum population of a few hundred residents. The town included stores, a hotel, saloons, and a school. However, by 1920, both Arthur and Stratford's mining efforts had only produced $68,000 worth, equivalent to around $868,000 in today's money. Following this, both Arthur and Stratford sold their claims to George Graham Rice who promoted the mine and sold shares of property. Rice had founded the Nevada Mining News Bureau in Goldfield, Nevada in 1904. Soon thereafter, also opening the L.M. Sullivan Trust Company alongside Larry Sullivan, the company had promoted stocks in worthless mines in towns such as Rhylite, Bullfrog, Wonder, Broken Hills, and Greenwater. Rice went on to invest $75,000, or today's equivalent of around $957,000, of stockholder money into the mine. In return, it only produced $7,000, or $89,000 today, dollars of revenue. 
The L.M. Sullivan Trust Company failed in 1907, and George Graham Rice relocated to Reno, Nevada, where he continued publishing the Nevada Mining News. Other companies in the area of Broken Hills had also turned out to be failures. In 1926, there was a silver rush in the Quartz Mountains nearby, which resulted in the post office as well as a few stores reopening in Broken Hills. However, by 1928, the settlement had declined again, though mining did continue in a limited fashion. Throughout the years of 1935 to 1940, the mines of Broken Hills produced approximately $180,000, or roughly $3.2 million in modern numbers. The town's post office eventually closed its doors in February of 1935, and after 1940, all mining activity had fully declined for Broken Hills, thus leading to its complete abandonment. So, after a huge amount of time digging around for photos, unfortunately, I was unable to find photographs of the town at its peak. The only material I could find was the initial early photo, followed by photos from visitors to it as a ghost town in modern times, which leads us to the state of Broken Hills today. Today, Broken Hills exists as one of many abandoned mining towns that litter the Nevada countryside. From this aerial view via Google Earth, we can see the remains of roads and paths snaking around its remnants. A few structures still exist here, though they are few and have mostly been left to fade away with the times. There have been visitors to the site, as the source of most of the modern photos I found come from curious travelers and expedition outfits visiting ghost towns around the American Southwest. There is also a singular gravesite and a memorial remaining in the former town, the grave of a man named Matt Costello. I decided to include some information about this man for memory's sake. Matt was an elderly prospector who lived a life of poverty until he struck a promising claim and sold it for $1,500, a good amount of money for the time. Matt celebrated and had many plans on what to do with his new riches. When his friends did not see him for a few days, they went looking for him. He was found dead sitting at his table in his cabin. He was buried by his friends near the cabin, although nothing remains of the cabin today. According to this website, he died an unknown date before May 17th, 1926. Born in 1866, he was either 59 or 60 years old at the time he passed. As I stated at the beginning of the video, my initial knowledge of Broken Hills came from the game Fallout 2. If you're unfamiliar with the Fallout series, it takes place in a universe that diverged from our own somewhere in the 1940s or 50s, and in the year 2077, a nuclear war between America and China rendered the planet a radioactive wasteland. Between radiation and other viruses, mutants and other creatures became commonplace. In the sequel to the original title, Fallout, which was set in Southern California, Fallout 2 took place in regions of Southern Oregon, Northern California, and Western Nevada. One such location included in the game is Broken Hills. Now inhabited by a mixture of humans, ghouls, and creatures known as super mutants, the town has an uneasy peace between all three groups. In this imagining of apocalyptic future Broken Hills, the main source of their wealth comes from uranium mines, drawing a similar parallel to its once real-world mining prospects. In some of the ending cinematics to the game, we can hear the story about how eventually these mines stop producing, forcing the inhabitants to head back out into the wasteland in search of a more sustainable place to live, also drawing parallels to what really happened with Broken Hills. With the destruction of the conspiracy to destroy the mutants, 
broken hills began to thrive. Then the uranium ran out. The city, having lost its sole reason for existing, slowly dispersed. The residents carried their riches with them, leaving the place a windswept, desolate ghost town. A few holdouts remained, attempting to eke out a pathetic existence, but eventually, they too disappeared. And that about covers it for the story of Broken Hills. I wanted to include the uh, fallout bit in this just because, like I said, this is where I initially learned about it from, and I think it's interesting that a ghost town as unknown as Broken Hills was included in a video game. I uh, couldn't find any other references for any movies or TV shows or other games that this town was included in, so it seemed appropriate to give it its, uh, its moment for its existence in Fallout 2. That just about does it. I had a lot of fun putting this together. I really enjoy making videos like this. Like I said, I'm new to it, but it's something I've been wanting to try for quite a long time now, and I do plan on making more. If you did enjoy the video, give it a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you feel that I deserve it, perhaps even subscribe. It's free after all. I do have plans for other topics in the future, perhaps longer videos. There wasn't a lot of material to work with on Broken Hills, there's just not a lot written down about it. But it was something that I found interesting, and so, here we are. Anyways folks, that will do it for me for this one. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Take care.